everyone, and thank you for coming to the channel, Dev Chanel Sports World, where we do reviews on in and everything. Okay, when we feel like it. And of course, things that we want to talk about. But we're gonna get on into this story that Celebrity Insider put out on the social media waves. Their topic of discussion today is Peter Thomas disses Cynthia Bailey and clap back to rude commentator. All thing I want to say before I start reading this commentary that um, celebrity insider uh, worker Ricky Mathers put out on May 25th, 2019 at 11.17 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Zone. Okay, and I'm just getting it today on the 26th, which is Sunday, Eastern Standard Time at 3.01 p.m. I'm the only thing I want to say is can we make it like it was? Where it used to be when I long for your love patiently or passionately, I don't know. Make it like it was. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Get the artist who sung that song, but anyway, y'all know where I'm going with it, okay? Why can't Real Housewives of Atlanta go back to the main players when we had Cynthia Bailey, Peter Thomas? We had Leon and Little Noel running around there. We had uh, um, Nene Leaks and Greg Leaks. We had Sage of Pops and Apollo uh, Anata. Apollo Nada, I think that's what it was. Then we had Candy and Todd and Mama Joyce. And then we had Kenya Moore with all of her men. She was trying to portray as her boyfriends and all of that. Thank the Lord she got a family now. So we can't really say make it like it was because we did have some exciting people um, it surprised us. Like Todd is still hanging in there for the long run. He's been a decent husband, I guess. Got Ace into there. And then they, uh, having two more uh, siblings join the family. And then we have Portia. She finally got married. Got her little baby pillar, Henna. McKinley, and hopefully she'll be getting married soon this year. Uh, they uh, posted it as New Year's Eve, I think it was, for this year, 2019. Then we had Kenya finally getting married to Mark Daly. Still not believing that story all the way, but it, it's flourishing. She has a baby, little baby Brooklyn, cutest little bug. Uh, huh, so many things positively have happened. Phaedra. I don't know what she's doing, pretty much. She's uh, hooked up with some honky-looking guy. He's, you know, very buff and, you know, giving you, like, testosterone all the way. I don't, he, won't, he don't favor Apollo, but he does uh, have a nice body and nice facial features. Okay. And then we have Kim, Zoziac, Sheen with Big Papa no more. Never really got a whole scoop of Big Papa, but... You know, it's an interesting storyline, but she has uh, six children now, and she's married to an ex-football player for the Falcons. Um, what is his name? Lord, I forgot the man's name. That's a Kim. Kim. Good God. I don't forgot his name. Show what, it, what Kim Berman's husband name. Kim hug. Kim Zosette. <laughs> my daughter said he ain't important <laughs> is it nice Scott shit I don't know y'all I don't know I just know she got a nice looking um husband it's a shame I can't remember that man name good lord but that's how it is when you're taking a story and you don't write down your notes you just freestyle okay so anyway we know she married to him she loves him and that is what it is okay but, you know, so I can't really say let's make it like a rule because we had some good stories come out of it um, by it dissolving itself and people going on to their own little shows and doing other little things here and there. But now I'm going to get to this commentary. Oh, we have it starting out as saying Peter Thomas and Cynthia Bailey have both moved on since their divorce that played out on Real Housewives of Atlanta. When one commentator took it among, upon themselves to insult his new lady, love, Peter wanted to uh, make sure that she knew that he upgraded and dissed his wife in the process. So I guess uh, Peter is taking 
little hints from Beyonce in her little uh, track tune. Upgrade you, upgrade you. Or, she, or he leveling it up, leveling it up, leveling it up, 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 like Sierra says. But these are his words, not mine, because I'm going to get into my own commentary about this little shade he threw on Miss Cynthia. But anyway, we move on to the commentary that this person wrote in this article. Um... We said Peter Thomas to make sure that she knew that he upgraded and dissed his ex-wife in the process. Thomas shared a photo of his new girlfriend in a bikini. Uh, the stunning photo received a comment from a hater who decided to compare her to Cynthia. She's a beautiful, much younger woman. Okay. <sighs> Peter, but she's no Cynthia Bailey, bro. Peter Best wishes <laughs> or best wishes, Peter. Okay, then it goes on to say to which the bar owner or the bar one owner responded with a simple but sharp. That's what's beautiful about her. Many thought that his response was shading while others defended him saying that it wasn't a big deal. Peter and Cynthia officially divorced in 2016, but problems were apparent long before that where rumors ran rampant that the aspiring restaurant tour was sinking their money into failing businesses. In fact, the grandfather of two opened up about it on Power 98 in an interview obtained by Bravo when they reported. She didn't believe in what he did for a living and that by extension, she didn't believe in him. He also said that he didn't feel supported in his career. Cynthia has her own version of how things went down. I would just say Peter's entitled to feel however he wants to feel. I cannot take that from him. I know what I gave to this marriage, and I think I wholeheartedly supported his businesses or business ventures. I had just reached my personal breaking point. I felt like I didn't have any more to give. So for me, it's not about playing the blame game, who didn't do enough, who wasn't supportive enough. That's just not where I am with this divorce. Cynthia is on the road to engagement with my team. Then it goes on to say, do you think Peter's clap back was shady? Well, I'm going to say, <laughs> yes, it was shady as I'll get out. Okay. My thing is, Peter, look, well, let me just go to the girl who claiming to be his uh, significant partner. And they even took snapshots. And I think it was Peter just throwing uh, insinuation that this may be his what? 15th wife <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, let me just backtrack let me retract that and say okay we knew he was married to Cynthia and he had like two or three more other wives that he had married in his younger lifetime or what not because he got kids all over him but safely to say he was married two or three other times prior to Cynthia and then he's trying to add on with another wife well let me just address this to his newfound love which I think they say her name is Tony Scott I think in somewhere I was looking, I think her name is Tony Scott. Uh, but I'm just going to say, honey, don't spend your 401k money that you saving up for retirement and maybe other ventures on Cent Peter Thomas, Cynthia's ex. Don't do it, girl. Look at his track record. Be like Oprah. Hell, just live together like she do with Stedman. You know, or something to that nature. But if your religion don't permit you to do so and you do need to get married, honey, put that engagement on hold until you really want to feel like, are you going to be losing money by supporting this man? Because Cynthia did support him. What she got tired of was her money going away from her bank account, her savings account, her retirement account, whatever account she was pulling from down the drain. And she didn't get to enjoy any of the fruits of her hard labor. <laughs> Okay, that's what she was tired of. Okay, it wasn't, you know, because Peter I can't take nothing away from his looks, uh, his personality. You know, it's very inviting and, 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 and charming in this, that, and the third. But when it starts coming down to them coins, them greenbacks, all that stuff that makes sense at the end of the day. Okay, because Tina Turner said, what love got to do with it? All right, what love got to do with this scenario, honey? We talking about money. We talking about security. We talking about finance before the romance. We, that's what we talking about. And Peter just giving this type that he just like living off really wealthy women or influential women that can introduce him to more money making schemes. Okay, or more money where he can scheme off folks. You know what I'm saying? Because this Tony Scott that he's dating, she gives me a little tease of a sorority chick. Like she's really tight 
with um, the school and academics, and she know a lot of heavy hitters when it comes into maybe finance or they have their own businesses, and she can really uh, introduce them to a lot of heavy hitters in the business world. You know what I'm saying? They're really not out there for everybody to know them, but she may know some heavy hitters that are billionaires because we have a lot of billionaires, millionaires running around here that people don't know about and they're black. You know what I'm saying? And they don't want to be known, you know, unless they in Forbes magazine and they consented to Forbes putting their business out there. But you have a lot of wealthy black people out here and hey, they ain't trying to let nobody know unless you run in that circle. Then you'll know this person got money. But they're called, you know, the black elite, <laughs> you know, the divine nine. You know, you got to be hooked up in that type of atmosphere and environment. OK, so that's what this lady gives me. She's connected real well when it comes to uh, being around money potentials, you know. And so, you know, and then she's very young. So Peter likes him young. He ain't got time to be fooling with an old woman. Because Cynthia might have say middle age or whatever. But she she knows people. She was in the fashion industry. She traveled all over the world. You know, she's no dummy to anything coming to towards business or interacting in the fashion world or the who's who. When you want to put something together in the, in the, tem, in the uh, entertainment world. So she knows a lot of heavy hitters too. Okay. So <laughs> it's like Peter don't just go pick women because he think they beautiful or whatever. He see potential, potential to upgrade him. You know what I'm saying? So every woman Peter mess with is an upgrade. Okay. So my sincere, heartfelt opinion to give to Miss Tony Scott, honey, look, look, sleep, eat, look again before you sit there and trying to call yourself going to the courthouse and then you're going to have a fancy wedding somewhere else off the coast or whatever or maybe right here in Atlanta and you want to make a big to-do about it girl, watch your pennies, watch your coin okay, because you're going to be using your 4K uh, pension money fooling with Peter Thomas and I hate to see you ass out, I really do because then they're going to have you on news social media because you're posting, or he's posting all these pictures of you all, and this, that, and the third, and like I said, it's just going to give you more exposure, but it's like, girl, look what he did to Cynthia Bailey, and maybe you should hook up with Cynthia Bailey <laughs> on the low, and see what you can get off on this Peter Thomas, so you won't be coming, you know, one of his victims, or opportunity, you know, we got to stay connected on what these dudes are out here doing. Yeah, they look fine. They may uh, have potential uh, revenue coming and maybe be maybe find some security for you all uh, later on in life. But, hey, we talking about now. We talking about what, what you got. How they always tell the woman, what you bringing to the table, okay? And if you bring the whole doggone table, shoot. You bring probably the whole goddamn house with you, okay? So you gotta like, do I want Peter Thomas that's on my arm say I got somebody and he's well known in the entertainment industry and this and that? But do I want to keep my money and I stay in my own flow and I try to go and get on one of these reality shows if I want to? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, woo! But you know, then again, say, do you want to be a part of some mindless? chatter going on you know and maybe helping your career maybe damaging your career because that's what reality tv does it's it's a lot of gossiping it's a lot of backbiting it's a lot of backstabbing uh it's a lot of putting your business out on front street you know it's just really opening up a can of worms that you're only looking at the revenue you can make but you're not looking at the damage it can cause for the longevity you know what i'm saying okay do you know what i'm saying so and now I'm going to get on Peter Thomas because I'm like, Peter Thomas, you know, you're supposed to be this man that got over Cynthia. You was cool about it. I mean, you couldn't work a deal with Bravo to get you Todd, Apollo, and, and Greg this uh, spinoff. I guess we'd be talking about the housewives, husbands of Atlanta. I wish you could have worked that deal and brought it to fruition. But for whatever reason, they didn't want to do it. And I'm like, I know I would have been watching because I know y'all were going to give me some. I know Greg is going to be a gentleman at all times, and he wasn't going to be part of the foolishness, okay? We got my OGs up in the house. <laughs> like, I, no, we ain't got time for that. And it gave a learning opportunity for Todd to grow up and be around manly men that, you know, love to smoke them cigars and they own little 
man cave that's very executive looking with the books and uh stairways staircases in the back the books here you know what i'm getting like a library type of forum where men of power and prestige get there and talk you know business or whatever just look all sexy you know what i'm saying with the leather going on all that Yes, I even saw it in my head. You know, Apollo with his five cell. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it would have been good. But Bravo slept on, slept on it for some reason. Who knows? I don't know. But, you know, you couldn't finesse it. And I understand your feelings got hurt. And so you just want to just leave everything. And especially when Cynthia was finna throw you out the door anyway. Because you're like, you're taking too much of my money, Peter. And you're going around here having apartments I don't know about. And then you're going around, have, you know, financing, leasing cars I don't know about. And buildings and all this stuff. And I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> that wasn't a good look. But you did provide something for Cynthia. You bought some... Uh, empty um, loft type warehousing things that she convert over to event spaces. So I remember you did have your hand in that one. So that was a good job for that because Cynthia is trying to make uh, some coins off that by written out for events to people that want to have that type of uh, uh, platform for whatever they're trying to do for us, what are they trying to expose to the community. So I was like, okay, kudos to you. But you need to stop trying to shade Cynthia. You know you were just as part of that demise of that marriage than anybody else. And probably was the forefront of, of it coming up on that she had to say, nope, I'm going to pop the brakes. If you don't straighten up, you know, we got to go. We got to separate. You know, and, and that, you know, hey, finance is the biggest thing that separates marriages. And it's all reality. It is. So, I can see why y'all broke and, and had to part and go separate ways because you were, you know how they say women like to spend a lot in a relationship and men just don't. Well, I think, Peter, you were the woman in the situation where you were spending all the money and Cynthia was like, no, nah, we need to conserve. I mean, that's why she got Bailey Lake, uh, Bailey Lake down there somewhere. I don't know where it is, but it looks nice, very serene. I don't know what she's going to do with it, especially she's talking about marrying Mike Hill that's in New York and he seems like he like doing all his business, uh, you know, he's a city boy, I guess I could say it like that, and he ain't country, and he ain't trying to live like that, he wants to be with the who's who, always in that busy, busy crowd, and, and, and just doing things uh, 365 days of the year and 24 hours a day type of man, you know what I'm saying, because he's in that sports world, so he has to keep up with all of that, so, I'm like, I don't really know why. It, to me, Cynthia and him just don't click. I'm sorry. They don't even look good together. I mean, Peter and Cynthia, they were just like Romeo and Juliet. Uh, but just the good side of them looking good together. And you could tell they had something there at one time. Love was there at one time. And now, you know, I'm just, I, I don't know. I mean, since, uh, Peter should never get married again, never, because he's just uh, a well-reserved bachelor. And, you know, he's like Hugh Hefner. He just loves women. All ages, all ethnicity, uh, ethnicities, uh, cultures, different backgrounds. He don't care. You could be white. You could be Indian. You could be an Eskimo. He, he really don't care. He just like beautiful, successful women. So I can't take that from but on that I can say people don't get married no more. Do not get married because you're gonna be divorced before a year turns out because a woman's going to realize you have the same format in each relationship you go to. You want to use their finance to get you uh solidified in some other entrepreneurship that don't have longevity. So, you know, it just is what it is. But um to sit and dog Cynthia out saying you upgraded. No. <laughs> you just probably slid laterally uh, over. Because I'm pretty sure, like I said, she just gave me a tease. This new girlfriend, young girlfriend. Seems like she is from the business world. And she's a sorority girl. And, you know, she's with that whole uh, Divine Nine clique. And... You know, it just is what it is. That's what I'm giving. And I have nothing against the sororities. Don't don't paint that picture that I'm saying. It's just, that's just a different group of people versus the entertainment world. You know what I'm saying? It's a business world, then it's an entertainment world, and then it's in the middle where it could be a, a little bit of both, you know? But that's what she gives me, and that's why Cynthia, I mean, uh, I think Peter is with her. Uh, other than that, he should be a, 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 just a bachelor, a, 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 just a well-reserved, a uh, global bachelor because he he just can't commit 
uh, to nothing of longevity with one woman. That's just all it is. If he could have five or six or seven women or ten women at one time, he probably could be settled because he'll get his top ten. You know what I'm saying? But then knowing Peter, he'll be trying to throw two more up in there. And that'll just, you know, disrupt the whole equation. But I just didn't like what he was trying to say. He upgraded. Like, no, you did a lateral move, honey. Because I ain't even going to dog the woman and say he's downgraded. You know, I, I'm not going to do women like that because we all need to uplift women. And we need to, and we as women need to be smart when we're dealing with these men of opportunity. Okay? So, all black men and all men aren't opportunists. I'm not saying that either. But I'm just saying, Mr. Peter Thomas has a pattern. Okay? And if you like dealing with him, knowing that you're not going to be his significant only one, then that's cool. As long as y'all got the plan feel fair. But if you think he's going to come in there and you're going to be his number one, whoo, honey, you better get some cigarettes out or some Moscato. Those are my favorite drinks. I have different uh, choices, a variety of different cigarettes, coolers I drink. And I have a certain uh, Moscato wine I drink. <laughs> but I'm like, you better pull it out, honey, because he's going to take you for long roller coaster ride through the mountains, through the valleys, <laughs> through the sky. It don't matter. So if you got your little helmet on and you strapped down, get ready for the whirlwind romance that's going to end up with your finances catering to whatever ventures he wants to get into, whether they're going to be uh, fully well streamed uh, income coming in or they're going to be going out. It's your choice. You got that's the man you're dealing with, Tony Scott. OK, but um. I just thought it was bad that Peter would say something negative when I have never heard Cynthia say anything uh, detrimental about Peter. And then when he's supposed to have a somewhat fair relationship still with her daughter, uh, Noelle. You know, Noelle, she's smart. She's intelligent. She's picking up on this little sly shading you're doing her mom. But yet you said you loved her. You still love her and respect her as a you know human being. And I'll just stand third. But I'm like, ooh. Thank you, Cynthia, for not having a baby with this man. <laughs> Cause boy, it would be all our war zone going on over there. Especially because kids don't like nobody talking about their parents. I don't care. They don't like it. But that's all I got for this story. I just had to say, Peter, Peter, Pocket Eater had a wife and couldn't keep him. Could have in a pocket shed that he kept up very well. Okay, I'm like, God, Peter, stop going around Atlanta, North Carolina. South Carolina, wherever you at here in the South. Stop doing that. Just say, you know, she is my in my past. I wish her well. You know, she got some new boyfriend now. Hopefully it works out for her. She got the overall happiness she deserves. You know, da da da. da. That's all you had to say, Pip. You had to say, oh, you upgraded. <laughs> I'm like, you riding around in an airport. These women are just air transportations for you and stuff. I'm like, really? Or they are home for you and you upgraded that way. Stop it, Peter. Stop it. Choose and use your words appropriately. But when you did that interview, totally disrespect, totally inappropriate. And I'm calling foul on you, Peter. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I don't know if this will be my last video for this weekend, but I'm going to try to come back on the tube because a few people had sent me messages saying what happened, where you are, why you're not doing this, this and that. I really I have just been busy. And when you really get in the scope of YouTube and trying to put out videos, trying to edit them, trying to make it make sense from the vision you have in your head and what you want to say to what the end product becomes, <laughs> it's just very, very time consuming. And like I said, I've been busy working, taking care of, you know, family issues and concerns. And it's just been a lot. And just have time where I'm not doing anything. I'm trying to sleep and rest my body. So to try to squeeze YouTube in here and there, you know, you might get every six months. You might get every three months. I don't know. It's just I get on YouTube when I feel like I want to talk about something or I feel like I want to talk. It's not a, a real money maker for me because uh, I've only been in, on YouTube for like three years. So and I haven't really been active too much except for that one year because I was at home. I was doing a home business and I was doing a lot of things and somewhat of that second year. But I had a, a few things that made me feel like, no, YouTube is not going to be my life income. I can't do it. You know, I have to find other avenue streams. And I tried, but I had to go back to the nine to five. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real with y'all. 
had to go back to the nine to five, get some things in order and, you know, try to live my life. And being on YouTube is not living my life. You know, it's, you know, living vicariously through other people's lives, giving my opinions. And that's all because I'm not sh trying to shame anybody. But, you know, certain things I won't speak on because I just don't feel like it. You know, it's just like I'll be giving my opinion, but it's not like. Who cares about your opinion? You know what I'm saying? So it has to be something I really care about or I really feel strongly about. And I just want to talk about it, you know? And then I get on to YouTube and say what I got to say and then I'm off. Um, but I wish all these people well that I do uh, commentary on or vlog on because I don't really feel... Sometimes they don't get shown in the uh, best of light. And, you know, sometimes they do and then they just doing stupid stuff out there. And people that are not really awake, awoken or awake to certain things, they'll believe anything. And they choose, pick and choose their um, mo uh, role models. And you can't do that. you got to always just be self-determined and self-disciplined and have great, great self-esteem about yourself to model yourself after or model yourself after. Don't always look to other people in entertainment and the music industry and try to say, okay, I want to do it like them. I want to be like them. No, because you don't really know. They're only showing you something that you want to see, but they're not showing you who you, they really are half the time. So you got to have some discernment. And you got to always pray about that. Let the Lord show you discernment and you um, he order your steps accordingly or you, in a sense, live your life like Christ. Love everybody, even though you don't want to, or they feel, you feel like you don't have to. Do it anyway. It feels better. It's better to love someone than to hate, because hate takes too much energy. But I leave you with this thought. Be kind to yourself. Work on yourself, and everybody will be blessed. Thank you. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon for something.